tutorial series of the operating system. I am an instructor Varshata. Let's start our lecture series. So uh, today we are starting the unit number one from the operating system syllabus. So topics to be covered from the unit number one that is introductions of operating system. Then we will see examples of operating system and then we will cover the history of the operating system. So uh, let's start. Okay, so first of all introductions of the operating system. So what is operating system? Are you aware about the operating system? The answer is yes. All of you are aware about the operating system. How? Because you are using the operating system in your day to day life. How? You are using the computer, you have a laptop, you have a PC. So this laptop and PC will work uh, with the use of the operating system. Without operating system, we can say PC is nothing. Why? Because operating system provides the interface to access this resources. Okay. So without operating system, the computer system cannot be used. Or any other examples of operating system. Do you have the washing machine at your home uh, to wash the clothes? Yes. Then that washing machine is one of the embedded operating system. Okay. Do you have LC? Okay. That LC you are uh, using for the numerical calculations. The, the, so that LC is also example of the operating system. Got it. So now all of you are about to what is the operating system? The basic concept. Now let's start. An operating system is the most important software that runs on the computer. Okay, operating system is the most important software. We can say operating system is a system but ultimately it is what a one type of software that runs on your computer. It manages the computer memory and processes as well as all of its software and hardware. Hardware that means the uh, devices, the peripherals that you need for the entire computer system. For example, mouse, keyboard, printers, these all are your hardware devices. Got it? Now, it is also, uh, it also allows you to communicate with the computer without knowing how to speak the computer's language. Okay, you don't know the computer language. Do you know? No. Are you going to uh, write uh, the C program in the computer understand, uh, understandable language? No, you cannot write. You can write the program as a human readable format. For example, uh, you want to uh, write the program for the editions. Okay, so what will happen? What you will do in C editor? You will open the C editor. In C editor, you will just uh, write the two or more uh, header files that will be needed in your program for example standard input out for the standard input output uh, so you will uh, add stdio.h likewise you will add also conio.h got it then what you will do you will start the main function and in that main function you will define two variables uh, then uh, you will get the value from the user otherwise you will assign the value to that particular variable as a static way and then uh, you will uh, define the arithmetic uh, expressions. For example, you have declared one variable C uh, and two variable A and B as the input. So you will write C is equal to A plus B. So that is the human readable form. And then you will print the C. So whenever you will execute that program, so that program will give you the output, the addition of the number A and B. Got it? So this program is what? In human readable form. But this program cannot be understood by the uh, computer. So to execute this program, you should have to convert this program into a uh, computer's understandable language. But can you do it by yourself? No, you cannot do it by yourself. Then how it is possible? The operating system will provide the way, will provide the interface, will provide the functionality to do so. Got it? So like this way, the operating system is used everywhere. Without an operating system, a computer is useless. You are not able to use the computer system without the operating system. Okay, so this is all the basic introductions about the operating system. Now let's see, here you can see these are the layers where your operating system lies. That means where your operating system placed. So here you can see at the bottom layer there is hardware. Now, are you able to give the command directly to the hardware? For example, you have a printer. So, are you able to give the command to that printer that printer just print the document one? Is it? No. 
the printer will not print the document one by your command but you have to give the command using the computer in which the computer system your printer is attached okay so you have to give the command to the printer using your operating system so whenever you will just print or you will uh, use the shortcut key control p and you will press the ok so that information will be passed to the printer and printer will print that document okay so uh, you cannot uh, interact with the hardware directly can you interact with the cpu no operating system will provide the interface to interact with the cpu got it so user use the applications to interact with the hardware through operating system so we can say operating system provides the beautiful interface so using this interface we are able to communicate with the computer system okay so uh, the statement is written that without operating system uh, computer is nothing got it here again you can see these are the numbers of hardware devices uh, they are connected to the computer system using the operating system so you can say monitor is there application is there disk drive is there keyboard is there printer mouse is there so all of this hardware devices are connected to the operating system sorry connected to the computer system through the operating system okay now next is the examples of operating system okay so these are the different examples of the operating system uh, windows is there uh, ms dos is there mac os is there linux solaris and android application you are using the windows application uh, windows operating system or linux operating system in your pc uh, suppose you have a laptop there windows or uh, linux is installed in uh, your pc you are using the mobile isn't it you have your mobile so in your mobile system there is an android application android operating system so in your day to day life also you are using these operating system so these are the different examples of the operating system Okay, now uh, let's start, let's move on to another topic that is history of operating system. Okay, so first of all, uh, first generation operating system. First generation era is uh, from 1945 to 1955. So this era is known as the first generation. First of all, who invented the first digital computer? Okay, so Charles Babbage invented the first digital computer. So we can say the Charles Babbage is a father of the digital computer system who invented the first digital computer. And in his invention, he used vacuum tubes and plug boards. Got it? So in first generation technology, we were using vacuum tubes and plug boards. But the size of the computer was very large around a one big room. Okay, so uh, let's uh, cover more introduction about the first generation uh, technology that used to that is vacuum tube OS not present at that time language is a machine language so user should have to understand the computer's language input that is a punch card and paper tag output as a printout came okay, and working run job run one job at a time so you can execute just one job at a time. If you want to execute the another job, you should have to wait when first job will complete its executions. Okay, so programmer ha have to enter the plug boards or a punch card into the computer, run it and record the result. So problems that were in the first generation technology, lots of wasted computer time, very expensive, CPU was ideal and it relied on the machine language. So these are the problems that were in the first generation technology. Now let's start with the second generation technology. The era that is 1955 to 1965. So this time duration is the second generation operating system. In second generation technology, transistors are used in the system. So transistors are invented. So the vacuum tube is replaced by the transistor in second generation technology. The machines that are produced are called the mainframes. Okay, and batch systems uh, uh, was used for the processing. So, what is batch system that is defined in this figure that you can see? Now, let's understand what is it. 
okay when uh, when any user want to execute its task so what user will do user will submit that process that job as a input to the machine that machine is a 1401 here you can see two machine two different machine is used 1401 and 7094 1401 that is used for input and output processing and 7094 is used for the numerical calculations for uh, proper calculations of the your job your process okay so first the user will give the punch card uh, as input to the uh, 1401 machine so where card reader will read that data and tap drive will define that particular job so it will define one input tab so that data will be written on one input tab okay now that input tab will be given to the machine 7094 here the 7094 machine will do the, all the calculations based on the input and it will generate one output tab okay now that output tab will be given to the 1401 machine again for the print out for the output printing okay so likewise this way the batch processing will work you first have to define give the input it will generate the input tab that input tab will be given to your calculation machine and it will generate the output tab and output tab will be given to again that 1401 machine and it will print your output so this is what a batch operating system okay so a uh, technology that is used in second generation transistors os presents at that time language that is assembly language or high level language input punch card and paper tab output is a print outs and its working is based on the batch operating system here you can see as we have seen in the last slide two different machine is used ibm 1401 reading for the reading card copying purpose and the print out and ibm 7094 for the real computing that for the numerical calculation now uh, next is the third generation technology that uh, era is between the 1965 to 1980 uh, integrated circuits are used in the place of the transistor in this computer okay so transistors were uh, replaced by the ics it provides the multi programming now what is multi programming at the same time you can use the you can execute the several programs in the memory at once okay so that is multi programming now about multi programming we will cover in the next upcoming lectures okay so it's provide the multi programming that means for the ability to have several programs in one main memory at once it it has its own memory partition so that uh, type of technology invented during the third generation technology okay so technology were used in third generation that is ic os is present language that is used high level language input uh, using the keyboard and output on the monitor and working that is using the multi programming now uh, what third the third generations in, uh, evolved okay so uh, what is the what was the problem in the second generation in second generation two completely different machines were there one is used for the output purpose and one is output and input purpose and another is used for the calculation purpose okay so bigger companies need the faster single machine and combine all the functionality at uh, one machine okay so ibm solved this problem and introduced the system 360 so that is the third generation technology okay and after the system 360 it defined so many series for the system 360 now next is four generation technology so era was started uh, during the 1980 until the present time we are using the four generation technology in four generation technology we all have the personal pcs personal computers okay lsi large scale integration circuit chips containing the thousands of transistors are used in the systems so numbers of transistor used on one circuit and it provides the faster communication faster speeds working of the fourth generation technology creation of the personal computers affordable so all have individual pc which are the major factors creation in pc birth of the microsoft and windows uh, os uh, was created in 19 uh, 1975 
Paul Allen and Bill Gates had a vision to take the PC at the high level. So all of you know that now everyone have their own PCs or laptops, etc. Introducing the MS-DOS in 1981 is uh, it was the, uh, effective, but difficulty is what you should have to remember the command to interact with the computer system. Now, uh, the largest OS technology that is Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows XP, uh, Windows 7, Windows 10, etc. So, this uh, Windows series is the largest used technology. Apple is a major OS and uh, which is created in 1980. And Steve Jobs, that is a co he is the co-founder of the uh, Apple created uh, Apple Macintosh, uh, which was a huge success uh, in the operating system era. So summary of this lecture, we have learned about the introduction of operating system, examples of different examples of the operating system that is a Windows, Linux, Android, etc. And then we have learned the history of the operating system uh, with fourth generation, first generation, second generation, third and fourth uh, generation to the recent time. Okay, so this is all about the, uh, this lecture. Okay, then thank you for watching. We will meet in the next lecture with a new interested topic. Thank you.